With FSR 2.0 having just launched in Deathloop a couple of days ago, we now see that Intel's own DLSS competitor, this one actually featuring a bit more of the machine learning side of things, uh, will be launching soon. So soon, it looks like May 20th in the game Dolmen. So this information is coming from an interview that they gave with WCCF Tech, although I'm reading the article here at Video Cards, and ah, my fat head's in the way, so better shrink myself down. So they asked straight up, will XESS support be available at launch? And he said, I think I can tell you that everything, including the partnership with Intel, will be released in the day one patch. And then they also asked, would it support um, AMD, FSR, and DLSS? Although, and the answer is yes. So we will get a DLSS versus XESS um, you know, test right off the bat with Dolmen. However, the FSR implementation in the game is currently 1.0, not 2.0 although they do have the intention to upgrade to 2.0. We don't have a timeline for that, although you know AMD claims it only takes three days if you're already supporting DLSS, but whether they want to devote that time or whether those uh, quotes are accurate. In other words, I think it could be a little while, but eventually this could be maybe the first game where we actually see all three technologies could be tested out um, in the same game, which is really exciting. So what's the big deal with this? So like AMD's FSR 2.0, the main advantage to XCSS over DLSS is its ability to support more graphics cards. Although the way that AMD is doing that with FSR 2.0 and uh, Intel is doing this with XCSS are a little bit different. So this brings in the question of exactly which GPUs will have fallback support for XCSS. So, Unlike FSR 2.0, uh, where AMD doesn't have any particular hardware that's specifically accelerating it on their own GPUs, XESS actually has specific hardware acceleration on Intel GPUs, which I guess won't matter much at launch because we don't have many GPUs out there by the 20th, do we now, Intel? Anyway, <laughs> um, but their XMX cores will give actual hardware acceleration to this, so it should run faster on Intel GPUs. However, they announced that it would have DP4A instruction support as a fallback, and many modern GPUs will support that. However, if you go all the way back to Nvidia's Maxwell GPUs, they don't have DP4A support. However, if you look at, um, as they're pointing out in this article, that on Intel's website, it's currently just saying that um, the main requirement, and it says main requirement, not only requirement, but the main requirement for the XESS algorithm is graphics drivers with support for shader model 6.4. Now, if it really only needs shader model 6.4, then it will be supported by Maxwell. But this is a little bit unclear at this point, because like we said, we have seen them claiming that it's a DP4A fallback. So. This will be interesting questions to be answered um, at least by the 20th when that comes out. And that should be really exciting um, because it's really nice to see this because both XCSS and FSR 2.0 are supposed to offer open source. Again, increased compatibility. It'll be really nice if one or the other or both uh, can get broad support and implementation um, in hopefully all the games that <laughs> DLSS does so that everybody who doesn't have an RTX card, and that's even some NVIDIA users, right? Uh, don't need to always rely on DLSS, uh, you know, or just not being out of luck if DLSS isn't there. Now, some big NVIDIA news when it comes to future GPUs. Ada Lovelace is going to be getting some massive upgrades compared to its uh, Ampere predecessor. And the main thing that we're getting this time is uh, from Copite 7 Kimi. And Copite 7 Kimi is a reliable leaker, gets a lot of things right uh, over a long period of time. So we can take a lot of Copite's leaks. Still, it's a leak. It's not official. Take it with a grain of salt. But with that being said, usually pretty accurate. So it's I think it's worth thinking about and reporting on. So what we're basically getting is block diagrams. And so then comparing it to block diagrams for Ampere, we can see a lot of what the specific upgrades are. And I think, uh, I'll link this in the description if you wanna dive in here. Uh, this is WCCF Tech reporting on this leak. 
Uh, but I think what's most interesting is what is the same and what is different for AD 102, and then this is its comparisons versus Ampere and Turing, and then going back even further. So it's uh, comparing both how everything's structured in terms of the GPCs, TPCs, SM subcores, FP32, FP32, and INT32, warps, threads, L1 cache, L2 cache, ROPs. There's a lot of things here, and I don't want to dive into everything. You can see that some things are structured the same but some things are going to be a huge boost. To me, the thing that's really jumping out at me is the L2 cache being uh, a massive 16 times increase over Ampere with 96 megabytes per the, per the whole GPU. Now, the L1 cache is also increased at 1.5x, but man, the, the L2 cache going up 16 times I'm really curious what that's going to do for the overall performance of the GPU. Also, ROPS, um, which will be 32 per GPC, is at 2x the level of Ampere. So we are seeing some major increases. Overall, the uh, quick summary here is basically that there's going to be a 50% increase over Ampere's L1 cache and uh, 16 times increase on the L2 cache. And oh, here's their better summary. That's, that's the one I was looking for. So the big deals are two times the GPCs versus Ampere, 50% more total cores, 50% more L1 cache, 16 times L2 cache, double the ROPs, and then you will have the newer Tensor and RT cores. Now, all of this also needs to take into account, like they're pointing out here, that the overall clock speeds themselves are also expected to improve. So with all of this just actually having more cores, more cache, all of that, getting faster clock speeds and getting down to TSMC's 4N process node uh, from Samsung's 8 nanometer node, we should expect some major, major performance gains from, these, uh, from this next generation of GPU that we're expecting at the end of this year. And so this is why a lot of people are thinking buying a high-end GPU right now uh, you know, if you could wait a few months, <laughs> new high-end could be pretty impressive, but are we just going to hit pricing, uh, ga gouging, bad availability, all of that? Hopefully not, because we have seen GPU prices coming down, and that leads me to my next topic. There's my segue. So AMD is announcing, it seems like before they were really wanting to or ready to, a new raise the game bundle for buying their GPUs. So it used to be pretty normal that when you would buy a new graphics card, it was often bundled with at least one game to help sweeten the deal, give you another reason to upgrade, which is nice, especially if it was a game you were already planning on buying. That really does save you money. Um, but we hadn't seen much of this because honestly, GPUs were selling out at ridiculous prices without ne the need to sweeten the deal, right? Well, GPU prices have been falling um, this is an Anantech article, or is it Anantech? I don't know, man. Anyway, <laughs> and they've tracked, uh, similar to what I've seen on my community page, that the, uh, <laughs> the prices for AMD GPUs, NVIDIA as well, but AMD has actually hit, not only hit MSRP on a lot of their GPUs, but even some of them have dropped below MSRP. These are the lowest prices that have been available on Newegg, and we see the 6900 XT has been below MSRP. We've seen that um, the 6700 XT has basically reached MSRP. We've seen that the 6600 is basically at MSRP. And honestly, the 6600 XT, which they're claiming is retired and completely replaced by the 6650 XT, I really hope not, because they're saying that the highest you've seen it, we've seen is 399. I've seen it lower than that. I've posted on my community page. Maybe that's at Newegg. I, with uh, man, anyway, the point is prices have fallen on these, so it's looking like AMD's looking to get people out there to buy these. So it's looking like the announcement is there's a bundle deal. Um, with at least $60 worth of games on any of these GPU purchases. And this is now, this is interesting because Anantech is the, this is the reason I pulled up their version of the article. They're the only ones I found who are actually specifically stating the games. They're stating Saints Row 2022 and Sniper Elite 5. Other places I've seen are just quoting that information from Anantech 
from this article, but it hasn't been posted as of my the time of filming and checking on AMD's website. Uh, it hasn't been posted specifically what games um, by AMD themselves that I could tell, but I'm just gonna assume that they have the inside info and those are the games. It's also, like I said, unclear exactly which GPUs would come with one or the other or both. But hey, there you go. You might get a better deal uh, if you wanted some of those games if you're looking to buy an AMD GPU. Now, jumping into some other stuff, CPU leaks. We've seen uh, a whole bunch coming out here. We see an AMD Zen 4 Raphael 8-core CPU clocking up to 5.2 gigahertz and with a GFX 1036 uh, RDNA 2 graphics spotted. So that's decent clock speeds. And I the thing is, other than that, I don't think we get anything too incredibly interesting out of this leak in terms of useful performance data or anything like that, uh, because I think this is clearly some kind of engineering sample and isn't really uh, telling us a whole lot other than those are out in the wild and getting tested. But um, this kind of goes along with the fact that from Moore's Law is Dead, we're seeing some big claims for Zen 4's increases over the previous generation. He's saying that Ryzen 7000 could be seeing, I mean, here's the summary of it, and again, I'm getting this from uh, video cards, but this is originally coming from Moore's Law is Dead. Uh, they're seeing, claiming 15 to 24% IPC increase over Zen 3. 24% is, is huge because that's just the IPC increase. If you combine that with an 18, 8 to 14% clock increase, which by the way, this article I just posted here showing the 5.2 gigahertz on an eight core Zen 4 chip is a big clock increase from what we would normally see on a uh, non overclocked <laughs> and all that uh, Zen 3 eight core. Um, so lending some credence to higher clock speeds, definitely being realistic here. Um, uh, leading to a 28 to 37% single thread performance increase over Zen 3, which is quite a big jump. And single thread performance like that should in, uh, definitely be fantastic for gaming performance. Um, so the, the thing is the multiplier, uh, the multi-threaded performance will either be at least like the single thread performance or higher. Uh, over Zen 3, and then we're getting some cache increases and all of that, PCIe 5.0 support, DDR5 memory support. The biggest thing I'm worried about with these is if, as far as I can tell, it seems like they're only going to be supporting DDR5, there's not going to be any DDR4 support. So while DDR5 prices have been coming down, I hope they come down enough by the time Zen 4 launches for it not to be kind of a bad deal to buy <laughs> at launch. Although you can always wait, and I'm sure eventually DDR5 prices will come out within reason. And then we're getting some launch schedule coming out uh, as well with Epic Genoa 7004 quarter four 2022 uh, taped out in March, BO testing, Ryzen 7000 Raphael second half of 2022, samples already running and production soon. Again, samples already running. We, yeah, like we said, we just saw some Raphael samples right there. And then Dragon Range, that's a mobile, but high-end, um, probably based on the desktop uh, silicon, um, high-end mobile CPU here, quarter one, 2023. Ryzen 7000 Phoenix, uh, which would be for more of the, the thin and light segment and uh, all rumors point to its APU being incredibly good for gaming. Uh, he's saying quarter one, 2023, and then we're say seeing a Threadripper 7000 Storm Peak first half of 2023. Now, um, there's some other details here, and you can always uh, dig into this further or watch the full Moore's Law is uh, Dead video, but uh, along these lines, Adored TV seems to have slides from an upcoming AMD uh, announcement or internal slides or some such. Uh, showing a roadmap for the Epic Zen 4 Genoa and Zen 5 Turin, uh, showing when we're expecting uh, the, these to pop in. So you can take a look at these slides as well. Now, personally, I'm more interested in the like gaming segment of stuff, so I'm not going to dwell on this too much. But hey, there's the roadmap. So if you were interested in the roadmap for all of that, this looks like a legit slide that he has his hand on, hands on for sure. Um, this looks like AMD Epic NDA deck. So this looks like a press deck slide that is currently under NDA. 
And then um, we've got some more here uh, talking about the SP6 density performance per watt optimized, all of that stuff. And then um, along these lines, we actually then kind of seeming to confirm that uh, on the Anantech forums, we've got pictures of the SP6 socket. So it does look to be confirmed that they're going to be uh, going with the SP6 socket. Looks a lot like the SP3 socket. Uh, there's some measurements and all of that. So kind of interesting there. Now, um, we're also seeing uh, AMD's Instinct MI300 uh, to be the first generation exascale APU with Zen 4 CPU and cDNA 3 GPUs. Again, with this not being like a at-home gaming thing, I'm not gonna dwell on this too much. You can again look at the article yourself, but we have a leaked slide uh, once again from Adored TV talking about um, uh, about all of this. I think the, the interesting thing here is the scalability of the uh, chiplets and the possible 3D stacking that you could do here with the different CPUs and uh, GPUs and all of that. Um, but this uh, does look kind of interesting if you are interested in the uh, uh, that space. Now, I'm more interested in gaming, so I'm kind of, uh, so I like this as a Steam Deck competitor. Now, I think Steam Deck is going to have locked down the price to performance on the handheld segment for uh, for a while now. But I think that the um, the competition should shoot for better performance or smaller form factors uh, rather than competing in that pr uh, pricing segment. And I think that's where, ah, I'm going to slide myself a little more out of the way here. Aeneo has the right idea now with a 6000U Rembrandt APU, which would be using Zen 3 Plus and RDNA 2 architectures, this should be faster than what's in the Steam Deck. It should give better gaming performance um, with them finally catching up to RDNA 2 graphics, but this uh, being a 12 compute unit version uh, up 50% from the eight compute unit version found in the Steam Deck. Now this chip itself should be able to clock higher as well, although we'll often see limited clock speeds in the mobile form factor, especially when you're not plugged in to a power outlet. Um, but the company CEO is confirming the device should be just as powerful as a GTX 1050 Ti. And for any of you saying a 1050 Ti is not very powerful, we're talking about a handheld and we're talking about a handheld that will be a 1280 by 800 display. So you're not trying to do 1080p gaming on this thing. You're trying to do 1280 by 800. It's also a frameless display, which looks quite nice. Um, so anyway, I think this is, this is neat. Comes with a fingerprint module, all of that. A uh, big question will be the pricing, but I think in general, it's gonna be fine if they price higher than the Steam Deck, if they offer better performance or a you know, higher end look, all of that. It'll be an interesting alternative. All right, uh, last couple of things. So if you're on an AMD 300 series motherboard from MSI and you were interested in upgrading to a Zen 3 chip at some point, good news, it says uh, MSI is announcing their entire AMD 300 series motherboard lineup will support Zen 3. So that is fantastic news for anybody on one of those boards and looking to grab a Zen 3 chip someday to keep things going. And Gigabyte, on the other hand, is announcing recalls and exchanges for their Z690i Aorus Ultra motherboard, citing PCIe Gen 4 related issues. So I'm mostly throwing that in here in case any of you have one of those and you're interested in that recall. And last thing, uh, just uh, not really PC, but hey, I have a Nintendo Switch, and I think it's the console that makes the most sense for a PC gamer in terms of offering something different than an at-home gaming PC. But anyway, um, it could use an upgrade, but the successor is hinted at by NVIDIA Next Gen Console Tools Engineer job ads. We might actually be seeing a Next Gen uh, a Nintendo console someday. We'll see. Now, I hope all of you have an excellent weekend.